Welcome to a belated unboxing. This is the Intel Sandy Bridge. Did I say Sandy Bridge? Because what I meant to say was Ivy Bridge lineup. So I don't have the whole lineup here today, but let's go over the general information about all of them first. So at launch, these are all 77 watt TDB processors. What that means is that they actually produce less heat in terms of their spec at stock speeds than the last generation Sandy Bridge processors, which were all 95 watt TDP processors. What is also cool about these guys is the fact that they are all using Intel's new 22 nanometer manufacturing process. That means more transistors in less space, which basically means two things. Either cost savings for Intel, which isn't of much concern to consumers. What do we care what Intel saves their cost on? Um, but number two, but wait, there's more, is and on the flip side of cost savings is that they can also not save the cost, but jam in more performance. So this is a small upgrade to the architecture. So they haven't jammed in too much more CPU performance, although they've jammed in a heck of a lot more integrated graphics performance. Um, where was I going with that? But they have put in a little bit more performance and they're not charging any more for it. And they do run cooler and yeah. Pretty much it's Ivy Bridge. So let's go over the general lineup before we unbox one. So these are apparently in some kind of an order. Ah, they are in an order. Okay, but I would put them like this. Way to go, Slick. Okay, and let's start over here. So this is an i5. That means it is still quad core. Okay. So back in the uh, back in the Linfield days, i5 pretty much meant dual core, if I recall correctly. No, it didn't. I'm wrong. Never mind. I named out there. Okay, so this is the i5, which means it does not have hyper threading. So it is four cores and four cores only. It's a 3450, so the 34 indicates like lower general frequency performance. And the 50 means that it has Intel HD Graphics 2500. From my testing, HD Graphics 2500 are approximately equivalent to the last generation Sandy Bridge HD 3000. So that is the higher end graphics from the last generation is now equivalent to the lower end graphics. Okay, we have Turbo Boost Technology 2.0, which basically means that if you're using fewer threads, that is you're running a game that's only single or dual threaded and you got four cores in here, it will go ahead and ramp up the frequency as long as you're cooling and, uh, and your power limitations. I think it's a, basically it's okay, it'll do it. Um, supports dual channel DDR3 memory, three year warranty, integrated memory controller and smart cache technology. Okay, most of those are not that relevant beyond just it goes like really fast. That's what all of that means. Okay, next we've got the i5-3570K. So a 35 means it's like better than a 34. And then an i5 means it like also doesn't have hyper threading. And the K, that's where, oh no, hold on. The 70 means it has HD 4000 graphics, which are significantly faster than 3000 and 2500 graphics, but still not as fast as AMD's APU. So it's something like a 3870K when it comes to DirectX 11 games, although it is DirectX 11 ready. And there is a benefit, right, right, benefit, okay. So HD 4000 graphics, the benefit it has over 2500 and basically anything else is that it just destroys every other method of quickly transcoding video. So if you want to take like a folder full of videos that you ripped off of your DVD that you bought of some show that you like, like, you know, Grey's Anatomy, for example, um, what you do is you just queue up all the, don't give me that look. You queue up all the videos to, to uh, convert them to a format that is more acceptable for your given device. So for example, if you have an iPhone, all you do is you use ArcSoft Media Converter 7, you say output to iPhone, and then you give it a folder to output to, and you click go, and then you tell it to use Intel's smart response technology. No, that's the, I'm uh, sorry, that's the other one, the SSDs. Uh, QuickSync. Use Intel QuickSync, and what it does is it does it in like half of the time of any other solution. So using all four dedicated CPU cores is still slower than using that integrated graphics, okay? So AMD's APU does not do that, but it, uh, it does sort of beat it in DirectX 11 gaming, but uh, this, to me anyway, is sort of more useful because I don't really use onboard graphics anywho. Right, so this is, uh, oh, everything's all out of order now. This was over here, right, we were over here. Okay, so the K, ah, the K means it's unlocked. Unlocked and unleashed. That means you basically overclock it as much as you want 
Most Ivy Ridge processors from their stock frequencies of around 3 point and change are good up to in excess of 4.5 gigahertz. However, when you overclock an Ivy Ridge processor, what you will notice is that it gets pretty hot. So you're going to want a pretty beefy cooler to go with your Ivy Ridge processor. Let's go ahead and move along. So this is an i7-3770, which means it has beefy graphics. It's like more better than this one because it's 37 instead of 35. And it is an i7. That means it has hyper threading. So that means it has four physical cores and eight virtual overall cores, including four virtual cores. So four physical, four virtual for eight total threads on this particular processor. This is not a K, which means you basically can overclock it, which means, I mean, in my personal opinion, as an overclocker, pretty much don't waste your money. Spend an extra couple bucks and go with this guy. So this is the king of the castle when it comes to Ivy Bridge. It's an i7 hyper threading. It's a 37, which means like more of the betterest than everything else. It is a 70, which means you have fast video encoding, and it is a K, which means you can overclock it quite easily to an excess of 4.6 gigahertz, which is what I'm running on my test bench. It also has, oh, look at that, has eight megs of cache. Cool. I didn't even realize the i5s only have six megs of cache. You learn something every day, don't you? Look at that, see, it says right on the box. Eight megs of cache, six megs of cache. Cool. So why don't we do for our unboxing the 3770K, since that is the hot skew that everyone and their dog is like super interested in. Hopefully it doesn't come with a plaster of Paris heatsink in the box and no CPU at all. Wink wink if you guys know what I'm, uh, what I'm referring to. I'm sure it won't because this one came from NCIX where most of the CPUs that they sell are real CPUs and not made of, yeah, plaster. Okay. Inside we find a CPU. This has 1,155 pads on the back, which correspond to 1,155 pins in your Z77, Z68, or even P67 motherboard, assuming your motherboard manufacturer goes ahead and updates the BIOS for you. It comes with a sticker. Ooh, it's shiny. As well as a three-year limited warranty, Intel logo, and installation instructions guidebook, which we're not going to open. It's basically pretty dry. And it comes with a stock cooler, which I would pretty much recommend that you, hold on, do we have a garbage can that I can like totally go for like an epic jump shot into? Uh, okay, whatever. Especially if you're overclocking, I would definitely recommend something more along these lines or like these lines. Whoa, there's like bolts and stuff. Okay, these lines. So this is Intel's cooler, which is pretty beastly and pretty cool. And uh, yeah, because Ivy Bridge does get pretty toasty and does, does draw more power once you've overclocked it. So I think that pretty much wraps it up. Thank you for checking out my Ivy Bridge unboxing, however late it may have been. And don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.